My life has been abundantly blessed and guided by my ancestors who knew that hard work, ingenuity, principle, and fairness were the keystones that could illuminate a pathway to self-worth, happiness, and success. Many people have shaped and influenced my life, but two, my father and grandmother, provided the rock-solid foundation that have improved the lives of thousands of families dating back to the 19th century and taught me the things I believe in today. My dad, Richard Aubrey Racy, known best to all of his friends as Dyke, instilled in me a profound appreciation of what responsibility means. Dyke Racy was the son of a hard-working first-generation American, my namesake, John Racy. John was raised in an almost all-German community near Frostburg, Maryland. He wanted to be in the timber business and moved to Davis, West Virginia, where he worked in the old-growth forest so thick that he would later tell his sons that the only way you could see anything was to look up. He was a teamster by trade, and he would take his team of horses and a supply wagon over the rugged mountains of West Virginia into Winchester, where he brought back supplies and merchandise, finally opening a store in Davis in the early part of the last century that carried everything from groceries to horse collars. Davis is where John Racy and his wife Minnie created a family of 11, six boys and five girls. My father, Dyke, was born in 1909 and explored the small village and surrounding mountains with his brother, Walter, who lives today in Morgantown at the age of 105. Dad worked hard at the store and diligently studied, saving enough to make the journey to Morgantown and attend West Virginia University. An excellent athlete and skilled boxer, my dad graduated from WVU in 1932. After coaching high school sports back in his home region, Dyke returned to Morgantown after he was named head coach of the Mountaineers. In 1942, with a team made up of players within a hundred mile radius from Morgantown, the Dyke Racy coached West Virginia Mountaineers won the prestigious National Invitational Tournament in New York. At the time, the eight-team NIT tournament champion was considered the national champion of college basketball. But what looked like the foundation of a great coaching career was cut short when, just a month after winning the title, my father was inducted into the Navy where he stayed until the end of World War II. I proudly stood by his side when he was enshrined in the West Virginia University Hall of Fame. Returning after the war to Morgantown, Dyke married my mother, beautiful Jane Greer, the daughter of Herbert and Agnes Greer. For the record, I came along second in 1950. My grandmother, Agnes Reeves Greer, was born in Dover, Ohio, the daughter of Jeremiah and Jane Reeves. Her father was a remarkable man. Born in Wales and an iron worker as a young man, he came to America with his brother Jabez just after the Civil War. The two brothers sought the vast opportunity this country offered and arrived perfectly in time for the great industrial revolution of the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Moving to Dover in 1883, my grandfather said he put all his eggs in one basket when he assumed control of the failing Dover Iron Works. Despite the odds, their hard work paid off and soon the company thrived, employing more than 850 workers by 1896. Firmly understanding what America had provided for him, Jeremiah Reeves freely gave back to the community, donating property and helping to build the local hospital, constructing both the Reeves Hotel and Reeves Bank downtown, building the town streetcar line, and providing good jobs for a large portion of Dover's population. He passed in 1920, having amassed a personal fortune of over $1.4 million, 53 years after he and Jabez landed in America penniless. His daughter Agnes learned much from her enterprising father, and after she married my grandfather Herbert, a Pennsylvania native and an 1899 MIT graduate, moved to Morgantown in 1907 where they founded Greer Limestone, bought and developed the Morgantown Dominion Post, and provided the first electrical service to Preston County. They made a formidable couple. He was pragmatic, as you would expect from an engineer, and she, like her father, was a riverboat gambler. 
My grandmother loved technology and personally held 18 federal patents. She designed, patented, and built the Reeves Pickler at Greer Steel Plant in Anderson, Indiana. Her passion was radio and she began to build stations and put them on the air in Dover, Morgantown, Kingwood, Pittsburgh, and Elkins. She also put the first UHF television station on the air in Pittsburgh and experimented with the ultra new FM radio, placing what is now WVAQ on the air in 1948. Maybe a little too much of a pioneer, she was roughly 25 years ahead of FM's rise to prominence in radio. I inherited my grandmother's love of radio, and when it was my turn to continue her legacy after graduating from WVU in 1973, I was lucky enough to purchase back the station she put on the air in Elkins and add another 25 radio stations to our portfolio around the state. In 1985, our parent company, West Virginia Radio Corporation, started the Metro News Radio Network to provide news, sports, information, and weather to a wonderful network of 62 stations all across the state. Today, Greer Industries have both maintained and expanded to include Greer Steel in Dover, Greer Limestone outside of Morgantown, Greer Lime in Riverton, Seneca Caverns, West Virginia Radio Corporation, the Morgantown Dominion Post, and Greer Asphalt. In recent years, we've built a premier golf course in Pikewood National, just outside of Morgantown, named in 2009 by Golf Digest Magazine, the best new private course in America. It is a tribute to my dad who loved the game with the same fervor that he embraced life. Our newest company, Pikewood Creative, a high-end video production house, helped in telling this story. Family is the bedrock of our society. My blessings include a great partner in my wife, Liz, and our two wonderful daughters, Jane and Agnes. They make what I do each and every day both meaningful and full of purpose. My ancestors believed in the American dream. They provided both the leadership and the inspiration to continue the legacy forward. Along with hundreds of colleagues across three states, but primarily in West Virginia, we work together every day to provide natural resources that build roads, clean the water you drink, and help in the construction of our state's infrastructure. We inform and entertain through newspaper and radio, visually stimulate and enlighten through HD video, and provide extremely close tolerance strip steel to manufacturers from coast to coast. You and your family use these products every day. Today we face a set of challenges that seem daunting, but I can assure you we've been here before. The upcoming election on November the 6th is a referendum on the values that have motivated generations of Americans since our founding. It's about free will, free enterprise, and freedom of thought. People ask me all the time why I'm running for the United States Senate. It's a fair question and deserves an honest answer. I am running to preserve what we've always referred to as the American dream. I stand to make the hard decisions and cast the necessary votes to ensure a better life for Liz, Jane and Agnes, for you and for your family. America has inched steadily towards a tipping point, a time when government intervention and interference creates such a drag on our economy and on our way of life that a reversal is impossible. Our great chance to arrest this March is November the 6th. We need a new president in the White House and a new senator on Capitol Hill so that we can finally get a new result from Washington. My grandfathers, my grandmothers, and my parents showed me the way to accountability, responsibility, and success. I am indebted to them and work every day to keep this great American legacy alive. Together, we've got this. We've got the strength and the will for change, the right ideas and the values to ensure the continuation of the greatest country on earth. We are all Americans, and we have the duty to protect and preserve what so many have built. I'm John Racy, and I approve of this message because I believe in you. I believe in West Virginia, and I believe in the United States of America.